Hey guys, how you doing? Steve Laff here. Um, on this one here, I'm going to do a little series on uh, hydronic heating and um, the basics of hydronic heating and uh, different components of hydronic heating. I know a lot of the guys down south, they work on just hot air stuff and um, I've had a lot of questions about hydronics and up my way, mostly it's all hydronic heating. We, you know, we have hot air and stuff, but uh, most of it is hydronic heating now hydronic heating could be either gas or oil that that doesn't affect um you know the operation or basically how the hydronic system works i'm just going to go over a residential hydronic system and once you get the theory and you understand what's happening you could apply that to commercial use or to any system you just add in different zones or different size pipe in or whatnot or it's all basically the same how it works you know on a high-rise building, you might have a you know a, a water feeder that you would adjust higher for more pressure to get the water up higher. Like on a three-family house, you might have, might need 20 pounds in the system instead of 12 um, to get the water up to that elevation to a, to a high third-floor apartment. Little stuff like that. But I'm gonna go over all that stuff in detail. This is just the introduction. I'm um, going over the basics. And uh, I'm going to bring, bring a series, and I'll just add them to this series, uh, different different parts and components of it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Hey guys, Steve Lab here. Um, on this here, I'm going to do a little bit on some hydronic stuff. Um, this is basically a gas boiler. Um, I'm going to do some hydronic information for you guys. And basically, um, this is like a package, 80% type of unit. What you have here is you got a, um, a a damper that would shut off, you know, after a call for heat, this would shut down, automatic vent damper. On this here, this package um, boiler would come with a circulator 007. This would be a cold start type of boiler. It wouldn't maintain temperature, 80% uh, type of boiler. Now on hydronics, it don't matter if it's gas or oil, the piping's always going to be the same. On this one here... This boiler right here is a tankless heater. Okay. So basically what a tankless heater is, this is for domestic hot water in a house. Um, they have a coil in here, like a like a pigtail type of coil. The water would go in. The boiler temp the boiler water would heat up that cold water to give you hot water for your faucets and showers and whatnot. In this particular boiler, you would have a high and low limit on this control. The low limit would be set at 160, high limit probably 180. Basically what that does is it would shut the circulator off. The circulator wouldn't run anything below 160. It shuts the circulator off to maintain um, boiler temperature for domestic hot water. That's priority. Okay, and this one's, this one's steam. I'm going to go over some steam stuff also in the future. This particular boiler here. Now, either you can get the boiler that has a tankless or without a tankless. If it doesn't, if it was without a tankless, it'll have just a black plate, and the control will be different. The control will be strictly a high limit. Uh, it's what what I would call a cold stop boiler if it has no tankless. Basically, it only would fire up for a call for heat, and other than that, it would cool off. With a, with a tankless, it'll maintain temperature, uh, whatever you set the low limit at. And then this would be a storage tank. This storage tank has a coil in it. Um, this is what you call a storage tank. You can either get a storage tank or an aqua bank. An aqua bank would just be an open tank that doesn't have a coil in it. And you could use a boiler that has a coil um, with a bronze circulator to heat the water up in the aqua bank. But this would this is what you call a storage tank. I did some little uh, uh, wiring di uh, piping diagrams. I'm going to go over that with you guys on hydronics. All right, the first diagram that I have here is basically um, a boiler. Okay, and this is a setup with circulators. I figured out three zones. Zone for the first, second, and basement zone on this. Okay, so you got your boiler here. You'd always have a relief valve on a boiler. Now, if you have a lot of radiation or if you have... Uh, big cast iron radiators in a house, you might need to have a bypass on the boiler. And all the bypass would do, you'd only have this if you had big radiators. 
The bypass would basically mix hot with the cold so you don't get you don't shock the boiler. Now if you just got copper fin baseboard, uh, you know, you wouldn't need the bypass. But I just put that in there just so you would see that you know sometimes it is it is needed. Um, so then basically uh, what you have is you got a water feeder that comes in that reduces the pressure down from city pressure to 12 to 15 pounds normally. Now if you had a three family home, you might have to jack this up to 20 pounds to get the water up to the third floor. But in a residential house, 12 pounds is uh, sufficient. Okay? So basically you're coming into the boiler at 12 pounds. You're coming up here on a supply. You go to an air scoop with an expansion tank. Whenever you heat water, it expands. You need an expansion tank with hydronics. Very important. A lot of the new ones are got a diaphragm in the tank. Some of the old tanks were up against the ceiling. Um, with those there, you got to drain them down every couple of years to let air in. As long as you have ex room for the, uh, the water to expand when it heats, you're good. Okay, well, on this particular device, um, I got three flow checks and three uh, circulators with three purge stations to get rid of the air. Now, you can either put the circulators on a return or on a supply. A lot of the new guys say the circulator should be on a supply. Um, it gets rid of the air. It keeps the air out of the system. I was always taught, you know, put them on the return. But you can't put them on a supply. It doesn't matter. Either way. All right, so basically on this system, with a hydronic system, what you're going to do is you're going to get all the air out of the loops. Okay, once you get the air out of the loops, the system will work. The circulators will circulate the water. If there's any air in these these loops with a hydronic system, it's a big problem. So I'm going to go over how to, how to purge the air out of this, this system. Um, what you would do here is you've got the three circulators. Obviously, you shut the power off at the boiler. Okay. And you'd shut these three ball valves off on the return. So you got the water coming in on the feeder. Okay, going up the supply. Through the supplies, you do each one individually. Basically, you'd be going up to, let's say this is the second floor. You'd go up to the second floor. You'd come back to this purge valve. You'd have a hose on this to the outside or to a drain or whatnot. And once you get this, this drain open, all these three are off. So you, you, what you're doing is you're feeding up to the supply and then coming back to the return. You can't go back to the boiler because the ball valve's off. And you're going out the drain with it, the hose. So you would open up this, this boiler drain, purge station. And then on the top of this water feeder, there's a little lever that you could flip up. And what that does is that bypasses that 12 pounds and lets city water pressure through the zone. Now, you got to flush that zone good. You can put your hand on the hose and you can feel all the air coming out. You want to let it run until it runs nice and clear, nice stream of, of, of water coming through the, through the zone. Once that zone has uh, been purged, you'd go to the next zone and to the next zone until they're all purged. Now, when you shut this boiler drain off, when, it, when the system's purged, you have to let that little lever down. Because if not, you'll build up pressure and blow this relief valve on this boiler, this pressure relief. Okay, so when you're all done with all three zones all purged, purged out with the flow checks in the, in the, in the three circulator system, you'd, you'd check, your, you'd check your, uh, your gauge in the boiler, make sure you got your proper, you know, tr proper um, pressure in the boiler. You don't want to start the boiler up, it's got 25 pounds in it. You, know, you want to have 12 to 15 pounds. Now, you can adjust this this water feeder. There's a little locker nut on it. You could take that and you could adjust that up and down. That little When you flip that lever up, it just basically pushes a pin down to allow, you know, city pressure through to, to pur for purging. So once you get your zones all purged out, all the air out, you know, you could open up all these three, these three ball valves, turn your boiler on. And for a call of heat, it would fire up and run the circulators. Now, I'm going to go over the other um, system with zone valves also. But this is just basic, the basics of hydronics. Now, once you get the basics down, you could apply this to a, a, a you know, a one, one zone system, five zone system, two zone system, a, a, a big commercial system. It's all the, the same basic idea. You know, you might have a little bit higher pressure. Um, on systems that have, have, have higher um, a higher head needed 
Um, you know, the circulators might be different. If you've got a system with a lot of volume, you might go with a 0010 instead of a 007. There's different circulators that's um, doable. Now, also, the size of the pipe matters, okay? I'm going to go over that as a chart. I'm going to go over with you on that um, as far as on a house like this, this is most likely like an inch and a quarter, inch and a quarter pipe going up to feed um feed this and coming back would probably be inch and a quarter also now on on the bypass you'd only have that if you had a lot of volume and the bypass would be like a three-quarter bypass you don't see that on a lot on a lot of systems but any system has a, a big volume of water you'll you have a bypass on it all that does is mix the hot with the cold so you don't shock the boiler coming back you'll see that a lot on oil boilers um if there's a lot of white uh, electrolysis inside the boiler when you do a cleaning most of the time it needs a bypass to stop that shocking of the boiler because when the boiler is hot and then it gets cold you get electrolysis hot and cold makes electrolysis okay so now let's go over the zone valves all right guys on the zone valve system it's basically the same sketch okay but on here we got zone valves. With zone valves, there's like a three wires on a Takos, uh, four and five wires on some of the Honeywells. It depends on what model you have. But say you have three zones, you could have three zone valves with one circulator. That's a cheaper way of doing it. It's you know these zone valves take like 90 seconds to open up to energize. So with a system like this, you would have you know three zones again. Um, three purge stations, which means three shutoffs and three boiler drains. Okay, and again, you'd have, you know, the boiler. The bypass, I just put that in there so you, you know that it, it is something that you might need. Okay. In my state, you don't need a low water cutoff unless it's over 300,000 BTU. Some states, you need that. Now, this could be gas or oil. Don't matter as far as that, what you fire it with. I'm just talking the hydronic system here. Uh, you'd have your boiler drain. You'd have your water feeder coming in, uh, come in on the supply. And the water feeder has to be on the supply side. If you put your water feeder on the return side over here, you'll never purge the air out. You understand? Has to be on this side. Has to be on the supply side. You could you could tee off um, right over here if you wanted. Put a tee off of here and put your water feeder here. But most of the time, I just put them on the supply. So you come off the supply, water feeder up through. Now on these zone valves, there's little bypass levers. Obviously, you shut the power off on this boiler when you're doing this purging the air out. There's no sense in running the boiler when you're pushing all that cold water through to get all the air out of the system. On these zone valves, there's little levers. You want to pull all these levers down, manually open these zone valves, all three, to purge the air out. You come over here, you throw, shut all three of these, zone val these uh, ball valves off. So you could fill the water up through the zones and then come back. It couldn't go back to the return, so it would have to come out the hose. And that's how you would purge it out. You'd go through each single zone, um, you know, op putting the hose on here, opening this feed up the bypass, purging that out until you got rid of all the air. Go through each zone. Once you go through each zone and you get all the air out, you get a good flow of water. You'd go re reinstall, re uh, restore these zone valves back to operational position, and uh, you know you'd fire it up, and the boiler would heat up, the water would expand in the expansion tank. You'd get rid of the air out of the high vent. This has already been purged. As long as you got a good, uh, steady uh, systems full of water, it will circulate. A lot of times, you you'll hit air in the lines, or it needs to be purged. Um, you know, you got it's not heating properly. You might have air in the loops. So that's basically it there with that one there. Um, I got a couple of things I'm gonna go over, with, but I'm gonna do a little series here on uh, hydronics, and uh, it'll help a lot of the guys out down south that don't see it that much. I'm gonna go over a diagram on the piping and tell you how many BTUs the piping puts out. Also, all right, guys, I got a little chart here. I'm gonna go over the piping. Um, Basically, three-quarter pipe. Right this middle roll is basically like a 007. Okay? As you go up, maybe a 0010 will be up in this range over here. But I usually stay right around in this range over here for figuring uh, the BTUs um, per 1,000 BTUs of the pipe. Now, three-quarter pipe It's only going to put out 30,000 BTUs. 
Okay, one inch pipe, fifty three thousand BTUs. So a small house, it's probably going to be a one inch main coming off that supply and return is going to be. That's all you're going to get out of one inch is fifty three thousand uh, BTUs. Inch and a quarter, hundred and eighteen thousand BTUs. Now, if you go with a double O ten, you might get one forty out of it. A bigger circulator, going to move more water, uh, type of thing. You know, um, inch and a quarter. 118 inch and a half 175 now with a double o10 maybe two 210 so that's going to determine the size of your piping needed um you know in regards to i've been to some houses they got a three-quarter pipe feeding the whole house and the guy can't figure out why in a cold day the house is cold well buddy it's because you're only going to put out um 30,000 BTUs out of a three-quarter pipe how you expect to heat a house 120,000 BTUs with um you know 30,000 capability get a flipping clue but that's the deal there so I just wanted to go over this chart with you guys and I see this all the time you go to a, a big house it's got a one inch main um you know you're only gonna get out you know 60,000 BTUs out of that one inch main so a lot of times you'd be kicking a dead dog trying to trying to produce something. It's like a lot of these HVAC systems will have to return. I see that all the time in the summertime. Have to return needed, and uh, you got low suction pressure, and it's because the system was never installed right. So this is the type of stuff we have to get get right from the get go. All right, guys. Um, I'm gonna do a lot more with this stuff. This is just kind of like the introduction. Uh, hopefully, I did okay with it.